My name is John Jackson, and I'm the author of Racial Paranoia, The Unintended Consequences of Political Correctness. For me, racial paranoia tries to find a language for describing what I think is unprecedented about the way race and racism circulate today. I would venture to say that for most people reading the book, um, their most intimate social cir circles, their most intimate social networks are decidedly racially segregated, right? Um, so the reason why racial paranoia can flourish is because we know when people go back to the sanctity of their own homes, their own dinner tables, the safety of friends, um, often these are very monoracial and homogenized spaces. And so we can anticipate that, or we can even imagine the idea that even though people aren't comfortable saying so maybe some of the worst versions of what they harbor in their darkest heart of hearts out in the public sphere, they might still have these homogenous, racially segregated spaces back home where they do let their guard down and where they do say the things that they would never say in mixed company. Historically, for the bulk of the history of this country, racism or racist logics were unabashed. Right? I mean, racists were out in the public sphere. Politicians up until the 1960s could actually um, campaign on ostensibly and explicitly racialist platforms. Things like segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. I mean, this was public knowledge, right? You weren't afraid of being called a racist. You weren't going to get thrown out of town or delegitimized. We've done a very good job since the 60s of demonizing that kind of explicit racist talk. What I want to argue is there's a flip side to that. The flip side is we often put the cart before the horse. We think that just because we've sanitized the language we use to talk about these issues, somehow it means we've transcended them. I think the issue is often it means we've just repressed them. And racial paranoia is my way of talking about how these repressed investments in race, sometimes irrational investments in race, from all corners of the American Republic bubble up and what happens when they bubble up and why we don't quite know how to respond to them, why we don't have a language for making sense of them, and why when we have debates, we usually just run to our separate corners and decide not to speak. Now we have this moment where you feel like, well, even if someone were racist, they would know they couldn't express that in the public sphere. And so all of our interactions aren't good faith interactions anymore because now we're not sure. We have to look between the lines. Is this someone on the up and up or just telling me what they think I want to hear in a politically corrected environment? A lot of people would say the racial wolves from the 1960s and before haven't vanished. They've just put on sheep's clothing. And so the idea of racial paranoia is trying to find a, 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 a conceptual framework for making sense of how people mind seemingly innocuous interactions for glimpses at what racial wolves in sheep's clothing might look like.